Thank you very much uh, to the Estonian government for the invitation uh, to this important event and uh, to address a timely issue that is needed by the international community, which is the accountability for the violations of human rights and humanitarian law in the context of the invasion of Russia to Ukraine. As you know, I was president of the Human Rights Council uh, last uh, year, and we addressed this issue in a way that no other international body did. Only four days after the Russian invasion to Ukraine, on February 28th, we decided to have a, an urgent debate on the situation in Ukraine before dealing with any other issue in the Human Rights Council that, as you know, is the main international intergovernmental body. And at that time, we had Russia and Ukraine as members of the Council. We actually had the permanent members of the Security Council. All of them, all five, were also members of the uh, Human Rights Council. But we have uh, quite a difference with the other parts of the international system. We do not have a veto. And that is something very important to understand why the Human Rights Council was historic in, in their, their role last year for accountability in this case. Um, first of all, only four days after the Security Council was paralyzed by the veto of the same country that committed the breach of the Charter, we decided to have an urgent debate and we approved on March 4th a historic commission of inquiry by an overwhelming majority of 32 votes, only two votes against Russia and Eritrea. And we decided to approve for the first time in history a commission of inquiry on the investigation of violations of human rights and humanitarian law in the context of this invasion. And the mandate of the commission was very clear and just to remind some of the mandates that you have in the resolution approved, investigate all alleged human rights abuses and violations, both of international human rights and international humanitarian law, um, and also collect, consolidate, and analyze evidence of such abuses and violations and systematically record and preserve all information, documentation, and evidence with interviews, statements, and forensic elements in, all, in accordance with the rules of international law with a view to any future judicial proceeding. So this is very important that the mandate of this commission is to collect evidence that will be useful for uh, prosecutions to those responsible for those violations. And of course, that includes, and in the mandate you have it, we have it, is uh, to uh, identify individuals and entities responsible for those human rights violations and related crimes. And we didn't stop with that commission. What we happened in Mariupol and other places, we decided to have a special session, a new one, on May 12th, and we extended the mandate uh, of the commission created in March to address the events that occurred in Kyiv, Chernikiv, Kharkiv, and Sumy regions at the end of February and March 2022. The important thing is that this commission that was that I appointed as president um, presented a NORA report that was very, very strong, very uh, professional. And uh, in case you didn't read it, I invite you to read it because their findings are essential to understand what's going on in regarding to these violations. When they submitted their report based on the investigations, they found reasonable grounds to conclude that an array of war crimes, violations of human rights and international humanitarian law have been committed in Ukraine. Furthermore, the commission documented attacks where explosive weapons were used indiscriminately in populated areas that were under attack by Russian armed forces. And of course, they also have examples of breach of international humanitarian law and failing to protect civilians or civilian objects against the effects of attacks, locating military objects and forces within or near densely populated areas. And uh, Russian armed forces are, according to the commission, responsible for the vast majority, of course, of the violations identified, including war crimes. 
And one of the most outstanding uh, impacts of that report was the patterns of summary executions and love for confinement, torture, ill treatment, rape, and other sexual violences committed in areas occupied by Russian armed forces. So as a final message, I would like to invite you to support uh, the work of the Human Rights Council, because this is the only independent um, accountability mechanism created by the most important international governmental body that we have for human rights. That is not a national prosecution, is not the European Union, is not an individual state, or is not an NGO. It's the only independent mechanism that is able to present a sound evidence of the violations that are going on and the atrocities committed. So with this, let me conclude to be uh, uh, how important it is the active participation of Estonia in the Human Rights Council that I enjoy as present the contribution of your country in the discussions, always present in all the discussions, not only in Ukraine. And this historic commission is uh, was a game changer in the way to address the accountability for these atrocities and the, the Human Rights Council was up to the responsibility when other parts of the collective system of the UN were paralyzed. So thank you very much for the invitation.